Welcome to the topic 3 of uh, the series Understanding C Program Execution Environment in uh, User Space. Here we'll be dealing with uh, a physical address space and a memory mapped I.O. This topic will be interesting uh, because we will see that we will clear the misconception of memory mapped I.O. Right? Which is there for the past three decades. Right. So we will see whether uh, uh, we can answer these questions which we had left behind in our uh, previous sessions, right? Address space. Address space is a very key pivotal topic, uh, pivotal concept in the entire course and the next course. For the aspiring developers and for the existing developers, the idea of address space is very important and plays a prominent role in your understanding and analysis of program execution. Hence, I am spending uh, some time on this. Right? It is just about the right articulation and uh, uh, right naming conventions which will take you forward. So we will define it. Range of addresses. Address space is nothing but a range of addresses, the first address to the last address. So I have given an example here. The three examples were uh, the number of addresses are 100, 99 and 100. Right? The differentiator is, is the first and the last address. Any one of these changes, the, it will be a different address space. Right? So the next thing is I have the same addresses, the address space is same, but it is in three instances of the same address space. So I want you to differentiate between the address space and an instance of an address space. We will, we will explore this in the context of program execution in the further sessions, right? So I, I do emphasize on this. And I also emphasize that you remember this uh, for your uh, lifetime as long as your uh, developers. Now let us look into the idea of address space in the computing environment. What are the address spaces that are present uh, there and what were the address spaces that were present uh, in the computing environment? It's always interesting uh, to look back into the history, how it started and how it uh, progressed. Yes, year 1976, Intel brought out with 8085. What are the prominent uh, features of this? 8-bit processor, number of address lines were 16, multiplexed with uh, eight lines of data bus so the total uh, address space i mean uh, the length of the address space was 64 kilobytes the designers uh, of the intel 8085 had desired to have more memory than 64 kb but uh, that was the limit and this address space was supposed to be shared with memory as well as io device registers which was the basic consumer of address space since uh, 64 kilobytes only was uh, small enough they decided to have two address spaces one is memory address space one is io address space how did they achieve this to have two address space we will see in a short while from now but these were the prominent features uh, this is how we can uh, represent the address space of memory and uh, I.O. devices on paper. So here we have a memory uh, address space ranging from 0 to FFF and a small I.O. address space of 0 to FF. Right? Uh, this is how the architecture uh, looks like. We have a CPU, we have the address decode logic which is responsible to uh, chip enable the uh, right memory bank so how does uh, the processor distinguish between two address spaces so the processor will 
pull the m bar i o pin low if it has to send the address to adl or if mas adl wants to uh, decode it or it will set the pin high if it is an i o address on what basis will the processor decide to pull or set this pin it is all depending on the instruction set so in intel introduced uh, two instruction sets uh, one is for memory addressing one is for io addressing load store instruction would uh, generate a address uh, for memory and uh, in and out instruction for io devices the differentiator is the opcode based on the opcode the decode engine decides to pull the pin low or high right so next year 1986 intel came up with 386 processor architecture let us look into the prominent features of this it had 32 bit uh, processor the register length of processor was 32 bits number of address lines was 32 huge address space 4 gb address space it was at it was raining of addresses so memory address space itself was 4 gb and still to keep up with the backward compatibility intel add an extra io address space right so what did intel do with this intel decided to share the memory address space with io devices so this is how the uh, the address architecture of 80386 looks like i have an address space of 4 gb where 4 mb of ram i have uh, decoded to the lower uh, 4 mb addresses and in between i have associated uh, 64 kb of io devices 1986 4 mb ram was used i mean it could have been an high end machine right so 4 gb minus 4 mb huge address space left intel decided to share the address space with io devices right this is how the architecture looks like now i have just uh, not included any host controller uh, to bring about the brevity in the diagram you could have uh, ISA host controller by 1986, and see the memory addresses post uh, address record logic can decode I/O devices as well as memory based on the addresses, right? What was what happened to the naming? What did Intel do with the naming? What we saw was the memory address space. was shared by io devices hence the name would be memory address space mapped io but intel to keep the name short and sweet lean and mean it named it as memory mapped io if memory mapped io the as a phrase if we give the it as a input to a intuitive mind how your intuitive mind will map it this is how it maps it will draw address space it will visualize the address space have 4 mb of ram within which carve out 64 kb of io device and think that okay in this place if i write something into that area magically it would be written into the io device registers this idea was fine with the engineers of 1980s because they had, because they had seen both and uh, maybe the only document they could refer is the manual the one who doesn't refer to the manual only sticks on this name it was a great confusion thus the classical confusion of memory mapped io was introduced by intel of all the great contribution what the intel has done uh to the revolution of it to the computing world this was a small confusion introduced but the manual 
defines it beautifully. I/O devices also may be placed in the 803x memory address space. This is an extract from the manual I386, page 146. But the naming was rightly wrong. It was not named it, hence the confusion. Right? Hence, in the current context, we can rename it as physical address space. Right? I see it as physical address space. It is no more a memory address space because the address space is not completely owned by the memory. Hence, I, we can name it as physical address space where the memory as well as IO device registers are associated. Mind you, for the newcomers, you buy a memory from the shop or any vendor, it will not have an address. The board designer has to associate an address by designing an address decode logic. Hence, it's an ad I, we, name, we can name it as a physical address space because the addresses are associated to a physical tangible elements called RAM and IO device registers. Right? Next, we will look into the address space or physical address space of the contemporary architecture 32-bit I3DL code. So we are on to the contemporary world um, where we can have around 2 GB of uh, RAM and uh, a significant amount of display device memory. The same address space shared between the memory and the peripheral device. I have just represented only these two uh, devices in the address space because these two are the biggest consumers of address space 256 MB of device, display device memory and 2 GB of RAM. The other peripheral devices of course consumes some bit of address space but very minuscule. For that we'll have a quick look into the architecture from the address space point of view as a processor uh, where it has a address decode logic which will decode either memory or any other peripheral devices. If the address is, is pertaining to a peripheral device, it will send to the host controller. The host controller will again try to address the right device. Right? So this is how the device of the contemporary world sit on the PCI bus, be it Ethernet device, be it display device or the hard disk controller. Right? You might be wondering why I have not mentioned the hard disk in the physical address space. Few people may have these doubts. I will leave it for you to ponder over till we uh, have this uh, discussion in our file system class, maybe in the uh, near future. Right? Suppose if I have Ethernet device associated here, assume that Ethernet device has around 100 registers, it will not have its own memory. So 4 bytes per register, it will go up to 400 bytes. 400 bytes of addresses of 4 billion addresses or 400 bytes of addresses of 400 crore addresses. Very minuscule. Hence, uh, it did not represent uh, in this uh, address space. Right? By the way, uh, I just want you to have a quick look into the address range of display device memory. Can we see this? Can we at least get information about this? Yes, you can. Here's the command LSPCI. Since it is sitting on the PCI bus, there's a tool called LSPCI which will scan through all the PCI devices, give some information about those devices. One such uh, information what we can get is about the memory. Here we have a VGA compatible controller where I can see here memory at the display device memory is at this uh, location E followed by seven zeros and the size is 256 MB. Hence the range of that device display device memory is from E followed by seven zeros to F followed by seven zeros. Right? Uh, this is all about uh, the address space or a physical address space of the 
contemporary architecture by the way contemporary is uh, maybe i have taken uh, architecture of uh, almost 7 8 years back even now we we, are, uh, we can get this uh, people would think the contemporary is all about 64 bit architecture which i have not represented here uh, next oh what happened to the answers that we asked in the first slide yes we are just a mile away to get the answers uh, stay tuned till then till we get back uh, in the next next uh, session till then take care bye bye